We have the can't miss box to discuss with you. Okay. The comic sensei. This is where you work part time, Ryan. This is, this is the other half of my job at the Mill Geek Comics, working with Russ. If you go to Mill Geek Comics in Mill Creek, Washington, this is what you're going to see. I mean, look at that. Look at that storefront right on the right. I mean, we've got a drone shot here. But if you wait a second, look right over here. I'm circling it with the mouse. This right here is Mill Geek Comics right there. You're going to see it. And look at the bottom right. Look at that, that, that uh, window. You'll see it in a second. Yeah. Boom. Do you see it? Barely. There you, you see are. It? There I am. There you are. That's the logo right there. The Comic Time logo is right there on the window. You can come visit Mill Geek Comics. It's an LCS. If you do Comics. it on Wednesday or Thursday, I'll say hi to you because I will be there. Come and visit us. But um, Russ had this really cool idea because people be missing comics. So we thought it, you know, he thought this up and I agreed. Let's just make it easy for the comic fam. They can join the Can't Miss Comics box. We pick the books. We make sure that those books get in your box and you get them sent from Mill Geek to you every month. This right here um, is curated. I pick a book. Ryan picks books. Russ picks books. But really, it's just about like what we think are going to be our favorite ones, things that you really got to read. You know, Donnie Case puts out a new book. You're going to get that issue one. You know, House of Slaughter comes out, Something's Killing the Children. You're going to get that book. Some of these are just like no-brainers. You got to get it. We want to make sure you get it. And there is an aspect of this that I really appreciate, which is some books get moved. It All happens every damn month. All the time. So what happens when it gets moved and you plan on getting it? Now you have to remember when the book comes out. Sometimes it's random. It's in four months, six months. It's just whatever happens. Comic books are tough to make, right? So this right here is a promise that Mill Geek's got to get you taken care of. This is not my store. This is not my box. This is not my product. This is my LCS and one that I support. And if you want to get comic books from Mill Geek, you can do it too by hitting the subscribe button on MillGeekComics.com. We kind of did steal the idea from you. Right? You had the mystery mail call that we do. We already sent out a box of comics to people, but this box is not random. That's true. There's no mystery in this box. We tell you exactly what's going out in there every month. And if one of these books that are being solicited um, ends up getting moved, no worries. There are plan Bs put in place so that something else goes in there. And the idea is to outdo expectations. So Russ has a lot of fun things planned for that. And that book, if it gets moved, it's going to just get moved to another month. So if you have a last Ronin situation where everyone's mm -hmm. waiting on these issues and they get pushed back and pushed back and pushed back, and then all of a sudden it comes out and you're like, damn it, I missed it. Well, you don't have to miss it anymore because the Can't Miss Box has got your back. So let's talk about 8 Billion Genies because we're talking about the May Can't Miss Box. You can sign up for that right now. And this is going to be in the box if everything goes according to plan. It's a, no, well, it better be because it says it's coming out next week. Yeah, so it seems like a, it's going to be good to go. A very, a very close book for them to push back. But this is a eight issue series coming out from Image. Uh, yeah, the new number one starts next week. But the premise just seemed way too cool to not, to not indulge in. Uh, it's written by Charles Soule with art by Ryan Brown. Uh, and the premise of this is basically every single person on earth gets their own genie and gets one wish. And then we have eight issues to kind of figure out what the hell that looks like, what happens, what the world looks like. Yeah, most of the time it's one person finds it. They get three wishes, and it's, right. a, it's a tale about their decisions. No, what if everyone gets to wish? Ryan, if you, and that's rooted in reality a little bit, like if this was something that, like an ability or something, you know, instead of like, oh, I get mm. to live on an island, my own island. Like, no, no, no. Like, like, let's do a wish of just like Fire Guy Ryan. Is that what you would do? You'd do you do an island? No, no, no. I'm, well, I haven't really thought about it yet. But Would your island have polar bears? <sighs> Probably. Maybe a smoke monster. You know, you can do both. I want sharks with Dharma tags on them. No. What would be your one wish of a genie if I could put one parameter ar around it? It's like an ability that you're going to get. Money. <laughs> How, though? Like, money's okay. Is Cash it like a to money. Is it like a Tobey Maguire type of thing where the, the web just manifests out of his wrist? Does money just fall out of your wrist? Now that you said that, I can't not do that. So, yeah, that... What if shoot cash out of my hands? What if it wasn't cash? What if it was coins? <laughs> what if you wish oh to God. be able to shoot coins out and you're like, I'm going to be rich and it's just pennies. <laughs> you're going a real specific, <laughs> strange direction with this. Like I just, this is Ryan's new superpower. That's a really lame superpower. It's like gold balls. It's like, it's like, hey, don't hit on gold balls. Yeah. It turns out that's a really those cool are power. Eggs. Yeah. You didn't know at the time. Maybe they're super pennies. That's why they smell kind of weird. <laughs> that was, they would smell weird no matter what. Okay, so um, 8 billion genies 
comes out, um, Charles Soule, you know, you know him from Star Wars and so many other things. Project, uh, excuse me, Letter 44, anyone? Mm, we got to read that book, dude. All right, let's do it again. Captain America, symbol of truth number one. If you liked Falcon and Winter Soldier, which really is top tier superhero entertainment, some of the best television programming that superheroes have ever gotten. It's like watching a movie. A lot of MCU hints and, and glimpses of the future in that show. I kind of forget it exists when I think about Disney Plus MCU shows. It almost separates itself like it's its own movie. Right. But no, we're getting uh, two separate Captain America ongoing series about to start. At the same time, we're putting the Sam Wilson Captain America new number one that's coming out next week as well. That is also going to be included in the May Can't Miss Comics box. You know, Cap 4 is coming soon, and who knows? I mean, geez, we got we were just talking about Peggy, Car- Peggy Carter last weekend. Oh, I cannot wait for Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness. We're going to get a just jaw-dropping Captain America 4. I just know it. It's going to be amazing. And we got to keep you up to date with Captain America's symbol of truth, numero uno. Oh, Batman Fortress. One of my biggest complaints about narratives at DC are when Superman's involved, and he, it's just too easy. It's like, why doesn't Superman just do this? But what if Superman's not around and Batman's got to be the leader of the JLA like he really always is, but do it without Superman's help? That's kind of the premise here. Yeah, like what what do you do when aliens show up and try to invade the planet and Superman is, where the hell is Superman? Why is he not here to help? He's chilling out, doing some Dr. Manhattan stuff on the moon. Probably. Yeah, he's doing something. So it's another eight-issue series from uh, from DC. This one has art by Derek Robins- Robertson, who does The Boys. Ooh, Derek Robertson. So that'll, be, that'll be a little interesting to yeah. see him do Batman stuff. That got me in. I I want to get certain books because of the synopsis, but sometimes just the creative team. That's all I need to hear. There's another um, one on here that got you in just by the creative team, too. Oh, are you talking about this one? This one, yeah. Shaolin Cowboy, Cruel to be Kin, number one. Yeah, this is all I need this to was, hear. This Comic was Con. not me. This was, this was Tom's pick. This is all hey, I look. needed to see. First off, I look at that cover. I can tell from a mile away. Mignola. Mignola cover. Yeah. Easy. Done. I need two copies. But then, Jeff Darrow on writing. I'll, I'll give you guys a secret, Comic Fam. If Jeff Darrow is... And art. Oh, and art. Of course. I know. Yep. If, if this is a Jeff Darrow comic, you get the comic. It's that easy. I know people are like, I don't know what to get. There's so many comics. I'm telling you right now, if it's a Mignola cover, the king of negative space, you get the comic. If you can afford it, you get two. If you're like me, you're going to get like five plus because I kind of got a problem. But Jeff Darrow is on that same list. Oh my gosh, stellar. Um, I don't even need to tell you the synopsis. Just pick up that book. All right, here we go. <laughs> Grim number one, Jenny Frizen, hot damn. We're She's like ascended, dude. We're throwing in the variant cover for have this you, comic. Have you seen what Jenny Frizen's been doing right now? She's got a variant for 8 billion genies that we also, oh my I'm, get, I'm getting that one personally. Dude, it's like every damn day she pumps out something and I'm like, Jenny freaking Frizen. Just do a bad one. Just do a bad one. It'll be good. You know, she just, does the bad one. People will be like, wow, this is the worst looking one. I love it. <laughs> I want to see what she can draw. Like, it's like the Peace Momoko Venom cover. The one in a hundred on Venom one that looks right. like a sock puppet. Dude, some people are like, that's the worst Venom cover I've ever seen. But then other people, yours truly, are like, I love it. Wow, the flowers. I, I'm literally, I'm sitting there going, look at the flowers. Yeah, it looks like a really cool puppet. Because that's like, what you think I don't of. know why, but I love it. I think of Venom, I think flowers. Okay, but this is cool because I've needed a Grim Reaper story. Like, like, what the hell, man? It just sounds like a cool little Boom Studios comic. Dude, it's uh, someone who wakes up and has a new job as a Grim Reaper. But she doesn't remember how she died, and she tries to, like, solve the mystery of her own death. And she's got to find where the original Grim Reaper, Grim Reaper is. But who cares? Look at that cover. Yeah, Jenny Honestly. Frizen, yo. Uh, pick up the covers. You are not going to be disappointed. And check out Jenny Frizen on Instagram. God, the Catwoman's dude. She's got a cool dog, too. She does. And the Catwoman's. And the Catwoman oh covers, too. Goodness. Those are fine. Okay, Bill S. is back on Moon Knight. Look at this cover. That's enough to make you stand up. Look at this damn cover. Comic fam, this is coming out. You can get this book. All right? Next from, week. Uh, from Mill Geek or from wherever you can. Next week, this is going to be on the shelf. Moon Knight, hit him with this. Moon Knight, Black, White, and Blood. This is a four-issue miniseries. This is issue number one. They've been doing these a lot lately where you do like a black and white series of comics with one splash of color. And Moon Knight makes a lot of sense, especially now with the Moon Knight show coming out. But there are three mini stories in here done by separate creative teams who don't normally do. They're not. It's not like they got the guy who's already writing Moon Knight to do another short story book. This is Jonathan Hickman's writing a story in here. 
Uh, Mark Guggenheim, I think he was, yeah. I think, wasn't he on Arrow or something? I think he was involved with the Arrowverse, if I'm not mistaken. But you get people who aren't normally in, involved with that universe coming in to tell a short story with a very strange art palette involved in the mix, too. So I've actually been a fan of these black, white, and sometimes they're yellow, like with Wonder Woman, or red and blue with Superman. There was a cool Carnage one. Mm-hmm. They're just fun. And get past the color gimmick because the real the real draw of these stories is the uh, the anthology aspect, the creative teams that are at work in here. And I'm just ready for four, a four-issue Moon Knight anthology. I'm ready for Moon Knight everything, man. I'm yeah. all in on Moon Knight. Um, I, going through both of the Lemire runs, again, I got the Warren Ellis run on deck. And, you know, I'm dabbling with the oldies, you know, the old stuff. And I'm all up on the new run of Moon Knight, which was really, really fun to read. Um, and seeing this cover... Bill S. Bill S. doing Moon Knight. This is how it should be, comic fam. This is how it should be. Okay. Um, did you know that we have a anniversary coming? Thor, the Hulk. It's the 60 year anniversary. 60 this year. years of both of them. That's right. And no better person than to to to, to write a an epic arc in celebration of this this milestone moment, the legacy, the history. The lore, everything. Then to get someone who has a legendary run of Thor already done, well, actively being done, and is currently working on another legendary run of the Hulk. His name is Sir Cates, and he's writing it. Five issues. It's a uh, Hulk versus Thor little crossover series done by Donny Cates. Easy. That's pretty easy. It made kind of made sense to include in this box as well. Something Donny Cates does really well is he puts together the you know like like a short run of books. And it's great as is. You can read one through five. And you're going to enjoy it. You're going to want to get the graphic novel. You're going to want to reread it sometimes. It's like God Country to me, man. Silver Surfer Black. Oh, Silver Surfer Black. Come on, man. Oh, those, those pencils, dude. We saw them. We saw them. We saw them, Ryan. After he spit on us, he showed us the pencils. <laughs> he did not spit on us, Ryan. <laughs> Johnny's a gentleman. Just me, me, the dog. But no, kids. Johnny was so cool that he told us, yeah, Silver Surfer's happening. Can't show, tell you anything, but I can show you some black and white pencils of Tradmore artwork, which Look is like, dude, Tradmore. I didn't even know what the hell I was looking at. It's like, oh, this is cool. I think <laughs> I can't tell you. It's cool. I think. And then we saw the comic, and we're yeah. like, oh, oh this okay, is here we cool. go. This is cool. All right, so, um, oh, okay, so, and I want to do a quick little plug for you, Ryan, because you've been doing stuff on whatnot, which I really appreciate. I think it's really cool that you're helping out Mill Geek, and you're putting yourself out there for the comic fam. You guys are going to be selling the can't miss boxes that don't sell throughout the month as an option on whatnot. So if you missed out on the April box and there's some books that you want from April, there are a couple that I wanted to point out that should get you excited. You can join Ryan on whatnot. Is there a day? I believe it'll be on Thursday. This Thursday, you will have these boxes for April that you'll be able to offer the community. Yes. He's giving a thumbs up comic fam. If you're listening to us on Spot- SoundCloud, Spotify, Stitcher, and iTunes, we have a new Star Wars Obi-Wan book coming up. Issue number one. You, you got to get ready. You excited for the show, Tom? I am. Surprisingly, Tom, yes. Tom loves Star Wars. I can't get him to shut up about it. Here's the thing. I don't love Star Wars, but I can't help but be super hyped about all of what's happening on Disney+. Plus. Mandalorian season one, season two, to me, is how I wish all of Star Wars was like. Right. Okay. It's so good. And knowing that we have um, the the OG cast coming to reprise their role in this Obi-Wan series, we're going to see Darth Vader go full Sith Lord. You know, some of the stuff that y- you wish you saw in the movies, but you get a taste of, or some of the times that we have seen them and you just get it, you literally just get like a quick little shot of them. You're going to, we're going to get that in Disney plus. So um, naturally we have Obi-Wan getting his issue number one, and if you want to get this book, well, just so you know, it's out very, very soon. But the April box is going to have this book in it. Also, Twig comes out. Scotty Young. I already regret not. I didn't order this for my, my own pull list. I you didn't, didn't, pull, you I didn't did, order it? I already regret it, even though the book's not out yet. Did you, get, pro- did you read the preview? It. No. It's weird. It's, it's got, um, so it, it's like, it's like the feelings I got when reading. It's compared to Bone right here in the, in the. Synopsis. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Like, the vibes were bone. Like it's an adventure story. It's very lively, but Middle West? Middle West, yes. Like how how like 
there's so much fantastical creatures and contraptions and weird stuff going on in the background because they're just having a creative spree. Right. Yeah, the like seven pages I read of Twig because there was a preview that you could read online. It's like creatures and the trees are talking and, you know, it's just all, it's very strange. The mountain is alive, you know. Scotty Young, man, he kills it. He's, he kills it as a creator. Comic fam, what do you think about Scotty Young? What do you think about the books that we're putting in the box, courtesy of Milgi Comics? Go check it out over on milgicomics.com. This book has hit 20 bucks. Let off the gas, comic fan, unless you're really gun for some Jack for the goodness. $75 cover price on this, don't overbid. But if somebody wants it, we got it. 